Hello and welcome to a special edition of Actually it is about race Featuring my friend Antonio If your neighborhood is too hot, that might be because of racism And that's because the temperature of a neighborhood is directly linked to an old practice called redlining Now if you're not sure what redlining is, I'm about to tell you Redlining is an old practice that was used from the early 1900s up until about the 1970s where banks and other financial institutions would only give people of color a mortgage if they decided to live in a specific neighborhood. The reason it's called redlining is because banks and other financial institutions in conjunction with governments would get together with a map of their city and use a red marker to line out specific areas where they wanted black, Latino, and other people of color to live. And the reason that they did this is because they wanted those people to have less services. Whether it be police, fire, ambulance, medical care, the whole nine yard, they wanted people that lived in those red line areas to have less of it. And that included jobs. A study was done recently of 108 different cities that had a history of redlining practices. And it is discovered that even 90 years after redlining, those cities were redlined, the areas where there are majority black and Latino people are still hot up to 13 degrees. And these are the cities with the largest discrepancies. Now you might be thinking, why can't they just turn on the AC? Well, it's not that simple. While most state municipalities require buildings to have adequate heat, they don't require buildings to have adequate air conditioning for the summer. When you factor in the cost of setting up an air conditioner, the amount of energy it uses, etc., it might not be an affordable option for a lot of people. And along with heat comes huge health issues. Did you know that heat kills more Americans than any other weather-related catastrophe? More than hurricanes and tornadoes combined? This study even said that within those communities that they went to, when the weather increases, so do increases in 911 calls and weather and heat-related injury. And the people that are impacted by this are not only minorities, but they're people that are poor and oftentimes disabled. The only factor that separated these hot neighborhoods from neighborhoods within the same zip code that had cooler temperatures were that those neighborhoods that had cooler temperatures had more trees. So when people say the block is hot, they might be speaking literally. And that right there gets right to the meat of the entire point of this series. Had you ever thought that something as basic as the temperature of your neighborhood could be connected to systemic racism? Well, now you know.